Hello, this is Toph from Trifo Production with another Blender Quickie for Beginners. And this Quickie is just the second part of how to track vertical footage in Blender. We did the first part last week of how to flip it from horizontal, which is the default setting in Blender, to vertical, which is seen as TikTok or portrait mode. So now we're going to track that same footage inside of Blender easily. Now, there are three things you have to keep in mind when, when it comes to tracking any footage in any software. The three things are you can't have over or underexposed footage because it won't pick up the track. You can't have blurry footage because it won't pick up the track. And you can't have excessively fast footage because obviously it won't pick up the track. So you have to have stable footage that's clear, uh, balanced lighting. And that's not blurry, and that's going to help out a lot when it comes to tracking footage in any software, Blender, After Effects, whatever you want to use. But right now we're using Blender, and tracking is going to be a bit of a process. So just sit back and you know, get just have a cup of coffee or something as you uh, go through the tracking process. Do that to help you yourself stay calm. Uh, and if you hear me kind of pausing um, when it comes to the tutorial, that's because I'm looking at my notes to make sure I'm getting all the points that are needed. I'm just going to go over the basic tracking uh, in Blender, not everything in detail, just as basic as possible to keep this tutorial as short as possible. But I'm using Blender 2.82 and we're going to open up our window for tracking. So let's scroll over, click on our plus sign. From the drop down menu to go to VFX and click on motion tracking. Let's left click on that. Then open, because you're going to open up a clip here. We're going to open up the clip that uh, we used last week. I've saved it in the YouTube Shorts. Left click on that, and you see where that footage is. Here it is. Left click, open clip. I'm not using the keyboard shortcuts add-on because it doesn't work for some reason in the VFX uh, panel. I don't know why that is, but that's just the nature of the situation. I'm going to scroll up on my mouse wheel, scroll down to zoom out. And we, have, have, we have our footage there. And then the next thing we'd like to do is, let me look at my notes again. We want to adjust the colors of the video footage because right now it's kind of, it's pretty washed out. So we want to adjust that to have a, a better, give it a better appearance. And we're going to go to our render tab, which is right here. Left click on that, go down to color management. Click on the arrow from the drop down, turn filmic to standard. See, it got a little bit darker. Next thing we want to do in our list of to do's for tracking, we want to set the uh, number of frames, make that make sure that's at the right number of frames. Right now, the default setting is 250, and this footage doesn't go up to 250, 250 frames. We're going to go to our track tab here and click on set frame rates. You'll see what happens up here when we click on set frame rates, click on that. And it puts it down to about 100 frames, which is what the number of frames is for this footage. And the next thing we'd like to do, let me see, is we want to, we want to set the frame rate or frames per second. Because right now it's 30. When we go to our output settings, the frame rate is 24 frames per second. So we're going to left click on that in our, in this tab here, we just call the output properties tab. Left click on that option there, turn down to 30. Now yours might be different, but to figure out what whatever yours is, look at your footage settings and they'll have that right there. The number of uh, frames that your clip is running at per second. Um, the next thing we'd like to do is we want to have smooth playback of our footage in Blender. Right now, the purple line here shows the duration of our clip. And apparently, since it's light in color, that means that the frame, the playback rate is not going to be that good. So we want to pre press on prefetch. And what that does is that it's going to uh, pretty much bake the the num the video into our computer in order for us to get a smooth playback whenever we play back our footage. You can see that the purple line got darker, which means that it has, it has been prefetched or baked into our system, which is a good thing. Uh, the next thing we'd like to do 
is click on this option in the tracking settings. So we're going to go to our tracking settings and we're going to scroll down and click on normalize. And what normalize does, let's put a check in that box, <clears throat> excuse me, that it helps us to, or helps actually tracks to track better in Blender to give, to give us a more accurate track, which is what we're looking for also. Um, and our next step is correlation. And that also helps with tracking. So that's in tracking settings extra. Left click on the arrow from the drop down menu. Correlation is at 0.75. Let's change this to 0.9. Give us a better track. 0.9, enter. Uh, and our next step is to add markers. Now you can manually add markers to your scene. Uh, but for myself, just to make it easier, I always have, I always let Blender itself at the markers because it is going to find points in your scene that are uh, of high contrast in terms of the best spots it's going to just add tracks to it automatically so we're going to scroll up and we're going to click on detect features left click on that and it's picked a lot of points for us now in blender the number of tracks that are needed to track effectively is eight and we have more than eight here, which is more than enough, which is good. Uh, and then the next step is from this pop-up menu to increase the efficiency of the tracks. Once again, let's click on that. And we're going to change the threshold. Right now it's at 0.5. I'm going to change it to 0.01. Left click on that to change it to 0.01. Enter. And that's going to add more tracks to our scene, which is the more tracks, the better, just in general. And we're going to change the distance between the tracks from 120 to 80, which gives us more efficiency, 80, enter. And adds more tracks to it, which is something else that we still want. And then to track your scene in Blender, you're going to press Control T. So Control T. And then I press Control T, Control T. There we go. Now it's tracking. You can see from the timeline down here is tracking all these points and it's going to it shouldn't take too long because the footage isn't that long at all all right and if you come to a point in your scene where it just stops tracking or you see a lot of red like right now we have a lot of red in our scene but we don't have any uh yellow ones the red ones, we have one yellow one, but that's not enough to track. Uh, the red ones are pretty much the ones that aren't tracking in the scene. Just go back a little bit in your in your scene to where you have a lot of markers that are yellow. Just right here. And the red ones we don't need. To get rid of the red ones, press Alt-D on your keyboard. Alt-D, and it gets rid of those. And we want to press Track again. You can turn off prefetch if you want to. That'll make it a little bit faster. Uh, but let's just let's press Control T just to can keep tracking from this from point eighty eight on. So we can get more tracks in it. So Control T again. And it didn't track that much. Let's go back again. And then we're going to press Detect Features, and then press Control T. So I can track further. And there we go. And it's got more than eight tracks here. So before you press Control T to track further in your scene, press Detect Features first, and then it'll, it'll add more tracks to your scene so you can track those tracks in your video. A lot of steps, I know. So the next thing we're going to do after we've got enough tracks set, is we want to kind of fix it a little bit. Because what we're looking for in our scene, when it comes to the solve error, we, want, we don't want all these crazy looking um, squiggly, squiggly lines that are not connected to the rest of the lines. You know you have a good track when all your tracks are in the same grouping. The ones that are kind of sticking out, you want to get rid of those. In order to do that, just left click and it highlights it 
and then press delete. Where are you, delete? Delete curve. And just do that throughout. You find any lines that are outside of the grouping, left click on it, delete, left click and delete. This shouldn't take too long, so I'm not going to really, I mean, if it takes longer than it's supposed to, I'll speed up the, the footage, but the video, but I don't think it's going to take too long. Delete that also. Left click, delete. Now let's look up here. Just deleting all the the rogue curves, so to speak. Let's go up here, delete that one also. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's delete a few more. Left click, delete. Left click, delete. You see, left click, delete that one also. Left click and delete. So yeah, that looks pretty good. You want to have this kind of grouping, this clean grouping for your track. Now the next thing we want to do, we want to solve our track here. We want to solve it to get a solve. Now they, I've been told that, uh, or I found out that your solve error in Blender the solver in Blender has to be somewhere below 1, like 0.05 or 0.2. The lower the solve error, the better. Uh, but from what I've seen from my own um, experimentation, that doesn't, that doesn't really... I've had a solve error of like 2 and, and 3 and 4 before, and it still comes out fine. So just do it according to the way you feel. If you feel that your track error is too high, you can fix it. But... I'm not going to cover that at this point in time. Just let's go to solve. And we're going to scroll down. And then we're going to put, um, let me see, put a check mark in the keyframe option there. And to refine, let me see, let's, let's refine it to. K1, K2 for the focal length. And let's click solve camera motion. Let's see the solver that we'll get from this. Once again, if it takes too long, let's want to pause it, then start it up again. So I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. Now my solve error. Oh. Something I failed to const reconstruct. Well, hopefully that's not gonna be an issue. Usually that, that doesn't come up, but my solve error is 0.46. 1, 4, which is good. If you can get lower than that, you can go for it, but uh, looks fine to me, so I don't have a problem with that. And then next we're going to go down. Let's scroll down here. And we're going to go to, uh, let me see. Let's go to, see let's go to floor and we don't need to really do the wall but let's do the floor for me it depends on you again what you want to do now in blender to set up the floor you need like three tracking points to set up the floor so what you'll have to do is left click on that option or that track hold down shift left click there and left click there and then set floor, and it sets the floor in your scene. You can set the origin, set the Y axis, or set up the wall. With origin, you can just click on one point. Let me see, this up the floor for us. You can just click on one point, I guess, and click on set origin. That's gonna move it for us a little bit more in our 3D viewport. And if you go to our 3D viewport, You'll see that it's actually changed our camera to the uh, vertical aspect, which is what we're looking for. So that's good. And let's see what other options we can set up here. Let me try to pull this up. You can set the scale also. It's supposed to set up a floor for us, a grid floor. Because with the floor, it's going to set up the floor as a shadow catcher. 
Now let me go through my notes again to make sure that it's actually doing the right thing. You see, oh, that's for scene setup. Right, that's that's when we do the scene setup. That's when it sets up the floor for us. But we've set the floor where we want the floor to be. As I said before, you can set up the x-axis and the y-axis to set the origin, which we've just done with the origin. You can set the scale. But let's set set uh, let's set up the tracking scene. So let's left click on that, and now it sets up the floor for us and our tracks. And as you can see, it's got all the tracks laid out for us the way we want them to be. If we look through our camera here, we can see that in our 3D viewport, if we go back in our play setting, we press play, focus your eyes on the 3D viewport here, and follow the camera. If we press play, you can see that the camera is moving the way it moved in our scene. If you're like, well, I can't see, how can we see the uh, the footage up here? That's pretty simple. Just go up to, we're going to render out in cycles. Because Eevee doesn't really support uh, the, the uh, shadow catch when it comes to the floor. So go to your, your uh, render properties tab. Left click on Eevee, turn to cycles. Uh, if you have a strong graphics card, turn it to GPU compute. We're gonna scroll over here, change our viewport, and then we, now we can see. We can see our. We saw it. I don't know where it went to. That was kind of strange. It just kind of changed and it changed changed our footage and it changed back to just the regular 3D viewport. We click back on that. Click back on cycles, and where did it go? Sometimes this happens in Blender, but. Uh, uh, don't worry about it. It's it's fine. It's the footage is still there because if you go to the different viewport shading, you can see the footage is still there. Now, a few things you want to keep in mind when you render this out, and you have to really remember this so that you don't end up frustrating yourself. Is uh, let's change our scene back to because we're done with all this. Let's go back to layouts and O again to see. Our footage there. Left click there and it did it again, brought up the footage and that disappeared again. But the footage is there. That's just Blender for you. See, it just kind of, I don't know why it does this. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, now, um, if you go to our scene collection here, our shadow catcher is here, but you can move it. You can manually move this wherever you want it to go. Because um, if you're going to place an object on this plane here, because this plane is, is our shadow catcher. This is where you want the shadows to be. And where's our plane? There's the plane. Sometimes it's are just kind of frustrating. But there's our plane there. Now, if you, you can manually move it. And our tracking points is like, well, where are our tracking points? To reveal our tracking points, you have to go to... Uh, view and bring up our display here. You see, where is our display? You see, let me pause this video and I'll get back to you so I can show you guys where the display is. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now I found out where the motion tracking setup is when it comes to the trackers. Uh, you have to go to our overlays here, viewport overlays. Click on that arrow. Let me deselect that. This is where it looks like when you go straight to the front, into the layout. Your trackers, you don't see them, but you do still need your trackers in order to set up your scene properly to way, the way you want them to be. So left click on that arrow from the drop down menu, click on motion tracking. Now if these arrows look too, or these points empties, which is what they're called, look too big, you can make uh, them smaller by going to size and then left clicking and dragging in that option there to make them smaller and that's where your tracking scene is now let's go back into the uh, camera viewport area here uh, through looking through the camera there are a few things that you have to keep in mind when you do uh, your output there and that's this make sure Make sure 100% that you go to the Render tab. Left click on that, that's our Render tab. Go down to Film. 
and click on transparent that's a must or else you're not going to see your video footage which is frustrating but that's one thing you have to do and then make sure also that um, the ground plane is in the background and if you try to render this out for some strange reason I don't know why this is but Blender is going to render out this gray square and you won't be able to see your footage at all your, vi your video footage so left click on that go to ground and drag it from the background into the foreground so left click and drag it up here and then once you've done that your background or your ground your background will be uh, will appear when you take it into the foreground and then the last thing you, you should do when it comes to running out your footage is left click on the camera and then go to the camera settings and then once you've gone to the camera settings go to camera left click on these three dots and then choose whatever camera you used to shoot your footage now for myself I used my iPhone 14 to shoot the footage but that's not in this version of Blender the closest that I've found that actually works properly when it comes to the focal length and the size is iPhone 5 so click whatever camera you use whether it was a Canon or a Blackmagic camera or these aspect ratios here um, a GoPro whatever footage whatever camera you used whatever brand click on that for myself as iPhone so iPhone 5 click on that because if you don't click on it and you try to run out your footage you'll have issues with sliding elements in your scene they'll just slide with the default camera settings that blenders at right now they're just going to slide back and forth in your scene so to, to avoid that frustration click on a camera preset that you used here so remember, turn it from uh, go to render, turn it from uh, or click on transparent to have your video footage show up in the render. Uh, take the ground from the background to the foreground, left click and drag it up, and then change your camera settings to the right presets in the camera settings option here. Once you get those three things done, you'll be able to render out normally. And how you render is just how I showed, it, showed you in the last video. Uh, once you set up everything, your objects and your scene, rendering is the same same thing. Uh, left click on output, scroll down, change it from PNG FM, FF MPEG video. Go to encoding, click on these three lines and three dots. From the pop-up menu, go to H.264 and MP4. Click on that arrow from the drop down menu, output quality, change it to high quality, and then click on this folder to choose your output settings to where you want to output it to in terms of the name of the file. Once you've done that, go this way to render, click on render, render animation, and then you're done. And that's how you can track vertical footage in Blender effectively. I know this was a little bit longer video because there's a lot of steps to it. You know, in After Effects it's a lot easier, but After Effects has its own challenges, has its own issues with that too. But in Blender, there's how to do it. So hopefully this was uh, helpful for those of you who are watching. Thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. Those of you who are subscribed now, those of you who will subscribe in the future, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.